Hello and welcome back to Tactical Shaminio. Over the next few videos, I'm going to show you the very secrets of becoming one of the best online pro clubs in the world. And it is a series of seven videos that I want to go through. The first of the seven part series will be this video around the basic strategy and framework. And this was born from Stoke Colonna, my old team from FIFA 14. And we'll talk around the basic philosophy around how to do this type of play. The next video will be around wing play, how the wingers stretch the opposition and ensure they're in a position to cross in the ball. The following video after that will be the finer details around crossing, when to cross, when not to cross and what types of crosses to provide. The next video will be the functional role of the cam, how they're assisting the wingers, therefore providing assists of the assist. And then the next video after that will be right back and left back, how they overlap, how they function in an attacking role. And then the following video after that will be how a striker helps with the build up play and ultimately heads in the goal and how to do that. And the final video will be around the defensive midfielder and breaking up attacks and, and more generally around how the team prep presses the opposition. Okay, so I'll start off with this video, giving you a rundown of the Stoke Alona philosophy and give you the basic strategy and framework on this type of play. In regards to the team setup, it's a 4-4-2 diamond with two wide wingers. So when we have the ball, I want the wingers to be right by the throwing line, stretching the opposition. If we were to lose the ball, I want those wingers to come in tight, right next to the CDM and get behind the ball, ensuring they are patrolling their own side of their area. At the same time, I need the attacking midfielder to drop and help press on players. Essentially, what we're trying to do is increase the intensity on pressing upon the opposition and push them out wide to ensure that they're not coming in the middle. The defensive midfielder is there to make sure they're cleaning up should they penetrate the attacking midfielder or any other wingers. We need to ensure that we're suffocating any form of attack there is and there's no space to pass or move. Now, when it comes to not having possession in the opposition half, there still needs to be a certain degree of intensity in terms of team pressing. So in this case, the opposition has the ball. I need both the strikers to hunt in packs and close him together to suffocate that space in his own half. At the same time, I need the midfielders to ensure that they're cutting off any potential passes that he could potentially have and therefore maintaining possession again quickly and efficiently. In terms of the defenders, they need to allow the midfield to press. So when it's in opposition half, they clearly need to move up to make sure they close that gap. However, if we were to lose possession or the opposition has possession in our own half, they need to drop off and allow the midfielders to press and do their job. So the defenders are a last line to make a tackle. Now in terms of the fullbacks, it's a different kind of story. I do want them to press, but not with the same intensity as a midfielder would. We've now come on to the attacking philosophy. And as I mentioned before, I want the two wingers hugging the touchline and stretching the opposition. I want them to be when they're on the last third of the opposition half, to be right on the so shoulder of the two fullbacks, and essentially exploiting these areas here to ensure they're in a space to cross. Our aim as a team is to expose the opposition fullback. We want to create a one-on-one -on -one situation with them 
to get our winger behind the space behind that full back to get across that's unchallenged and accurate. In order for this to happen, it requires a huge amount of off the ball movement from the team players. In the most simplistic sense, I'm going to use this example. So we have the right midfielder have the ball. It's the cam that needs to come in into a pocket of space to provide a one-two. The right midfielder passes into the cam and moves into the space behind the fullback. When the fullback is committing into the cam, the cam then plays a through ball into the winger who ultimately is in place, unchallenged, to put in a cross. Okay, so that's the move in its most basic sense. However, what I want to completely avoid is for the winger to take on the fullback. And a couple of reasons why we, we avoid this is because, first of all, if the winger was to take on that fullback, it means that that fullback is shoulder to shoulder in terms of the challenge and a cross going in will be inaccurate. Now the other reason why is because there is an exposure to losing possession there and because of the commitment from the, the team and the players going forward it leaves the back line heavily exposed, exposed in terms of a break. And it, us losing it cheaply in that area because of not taking the option to do one-twos or hold up the ball means that there is a very high chance for us to concede a, a goal through losing cheap possession in their half. Now if I bring this back again and use the example where the cam now has possession of the ball. And that right midfielder is going to run into that space. Now if the fullback's smart, he'll follow that run. And in this example, this is where the cam needs to pass to the feet of the winger. And therefore the winger passes back to the cam to try and tempt him to move and commit into the cam to create the space behind. If the constant interchange between cam and winger isn't proving fruitful, because the opposition fullback is consistently tracking that run, there is another option. So the cam can pass into the, the, the winger's feet, and this is where our fullback starts moving up the pitch. So when the ball is into the winger's feet, the, our own fullback starts to move into the space behind the opposition fullback because that, cre that space is created from our own winger holding onto the ball. And our own winger then passes into our own fullback for him to then cross the ball. There are times where the opposition fullback would get some help from their own midfield. So effectively their midfielder drops back and we got to contend with effectively two defenders between the cam and the right midfielder. So in this case there needs to be interchange between the right midfielder and the cam to each other's feet until there's an opportunity to get a through ball but there are other options there as well where the winger could potentially put in an early cross before they've got to the fullback or do a cut in cross um, and swing it in this way um, those are more risky so what I would much prefer and poses less risk in losing possession is for the winger to hold up the ball again, allowing the, our own right back to come up the pitch and get in behind him to do an overlap and effectively do a cross that way. However, even with the overlap and the cut in cross or the early cross, there are instances where the opposition has figured out that we want to go wide and down the wing and therefore they will make every attempt to clog up that side. So we'll have an example where three of them actually now come in and start clogging up. So the fullback will drop deep to stop any form of cross coming in and their CDM will come in to clog up that side as well as their left midfielder blocking it up as well. So in this instance, what we need to do is ensure we switch the play. So how to do that 
what we need to do is ensure the ball gets back to the cam. The cam then passes back to the CDM, who is always going to be in a position to offer to receive the ball back to him in space. And then the CDM switches the play to the other winger. And notice the other winger will never ever be in the box because they're wide enough and always in a position ready for the switch to play. So they, that winger then has an option to go down that wing and cross it in, or they also have the option to have the other fullback come further out for an overlap and cross. You also need to take into account, with the switch to play and the ball going over to the other side, the cam is not going to be available quick enough for the 1-2. So this is when the striker needs to move out of the box and offer themselves for the 1-2 and then go straight back into the box to head in the cross. Now we get on to the strikers. Now with the strikers, it is so important to be very disciplined in terms of their positioning because if you're both in the same position when the cross comes in, it means it locks each, up, each of you off and therefore it goes straight over your head and we lose possession. So with this, I need the left striker to stay on the left side, the right striker to stay on the right side. And if I use the example of the ball being on the right hand side and being crossed in, and when it's a swinging cross, typically that ball is going towards the front post. And in this case, the right forward needs to be heading it in, in line with the, the right post. Now, if it's a cutback cross, typically those sorts of crosses go towards the back post and therefore I expect the left forward to cross it in. Now, in the case of an early cross, that typically goes towards a penalty area and it needs to be a, an executive decision as to which striker goes towards that ball and heads it in. I'm going to wrap up now and really summarise what I've gone through in terms of the attacking side. So just to start off with and remind you, wingers, they go out wide and hug the touchline when it's on their side. And the winger should avoid as much as possible taking on that corresponding opposition fullback and ensure that they maximise that opportunity to get that, that um, through ball through for a cross. It would be a cardinal sin to lose possession in that area where they can counter-attack on us. In terms of the cam, they need to make sure they're available for the corresponding winger for little one-twos. In the absence of the cam being there, I want the striker to drop back a little bit and offer themselves for a one-two and move away as soon as the cam does come into that space. Now, in terms of the strikers, I want you to ensure that you stay on your own side. The left forward stays on the left side, the right forward stays on the right side. The Stoke Colonna philosophy requires an incredible amount of discipline and the ability to follow these instructions to the nth degree. Any form of deviation from this causes a huge amount of chaos within the team. Any player that's slightly off form creates amount of imbalance. So it's so important that every single player collectively comes together and performs their function to the best they possibly can. And this is when this philosophy is unbeatable. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Facebook. And most importantly, don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel. See you next week.